Hi guys, it's Wade McMaster here. Just got another video for you here on the Divi 4 series showing you how to use the Divi Theme Builder to build the body of your website. Now the Divi Theme Builder is has been an insanely good um, little option that they've added to their theme. Basically, in the past, you could build really awesome websites using the Divi Page Builder, which allowed you to create completely custom pages, uh, but it only allowed you to change so much of the website template. With the Divi Theme Builder, we now have the option to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of designing the theme as we can use the exact same builder options in different areas of the website. Now, in the last video, we set up this one here, which was the header. Not the most attractive header in the world, but it was a good example of what you can achieve with the custom tools. We basically added a background with a gradient, skewed this image, added a nice button on the side. We've got all these options. Now, we did have a little bar here, but I've removed it for this video because I do want to show you, I have a bit of an idea for something I want to put together. So what I'm going to do is show you this page builder for a blog post. So this is a standard blog post we've got. We've got our custom header that we've built, and I've just got the standard blog post template. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tab on back, and we see we've got our theme builder here. So I'm going to add a global body to this section. I'm going to build that. And we're going to build that from scratch. So I'm going to click Start Building and put a full width single column section in there. Now, the first thing you want to do is add in the post title. So this is where the type, the dynamic sort of uh, whatever post you're viewing, this is the title of that post. So that way, if you're using your standard WordPress editor, this is what's going to show through. Just like if you put your post content there, that's what's going to show through there as well. So if I add in the post title, first, you can see we get a few options. This looks very much like the standard, but once we start playing a bit, we can change that very drastically. So you can see we've got up top here, we've got our title and we've got our meta. Now, one of the things you've got here also is the featured image. Now, I'm actually not a big fan of having the featured image there look quite like that. So what I can do, because I've got the post title settings here, under elements, I can turn off a few things. I can turn off the categories here, comment count, and maybe I'll keep the date and the author. Although maybe you want to change the format uh, of the date. So we can change the format around if you want to. I might just turn off the date actually. So we got the title and the author. Now I want to turn off the featured image, so I'll turn that off there. So now we have our basic title. So I'm going to leave that there just for now. Just get our options out on the page. Now I'm going to add here, I'm going to add another row. So I'm going to click add here. This time we'll go regular and we'll add in a column structure. So we're going to go say something that's about it's about 70% of the page, 30% on the right. And on the left here, I'm going to add our post content. On the right, we're going to add our sidebar. So scroll down, click a sidebar. So now we have all of our standard elements on the page. We have our post content here on the left, our sidebar on the right, and our title at the very top. Now you can simply put the title again by moving this here. I can pop it just above the post content here, so it just sits there in the same column. But I want to show you something really cool, just a cool way, cool little uh, page you can build with it. And during the build of it, you'll see just what's possible with this builder. So I'm going to do some basic stuff first. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here under design, under heading text, and under all the headings, I'm going to choose permanent marker, which is not the most attractive font, but just for the sake of this video, it shows you just what's available. And click on all our headings, make them permanent marker, just to get it looking a little bit different. As you can see, all the fonts here, we have every single Google font here. So you can see there's a massive list of fonts to go through. I do recommend you go to fonts.google.com if you want to actually scroll through and find a font more easily than going through here one by one. But um, yeah, they're all there. So it's a pretty powerful tool. And of course, if you want to, you can upload a font if you are a little bit more savvy with that sort of thing. So we've changed our, we've changed this here. And maybe under the standard text, if I keep scrolling, whoops, I've gone too far. Maybe I want to make the text a bit bigger, make the line height a bit bigger. Let's say we're happy with that layout. I'm going to tick that. 
And I'm going to go up here. And once again, I make the title text say permanent marker. I'm going to make it nice and big. And we've got our little author row here. So I'm going to go tick this up under meta text. I can go in. I've got all these options here. I can change the font, font weight style I can change the alignment I can make it right aligned if I want to centered we can do this with the title as well change the color to red and I can make it much bigger a lot of options add a drop shadow got all of these design options now from sizing uh, all these filters animations I can actually have it flip on in if I want to it's very cool there's just endless Endless options here for you to play with, size, spacing, that sort of thing. Now, one thing I think is really cool is if I go up here to the top in this blue area, this is, uh, I broke this down in the last video, but basically you've got your rows, which is these big blue areas, which are like a row by row scenario. And these little green boxes contain your columns. You see here, we've got two columns. We've got one on the left, one on the right. This one's just one wide column. And the gray areas here are the modules. So this is our post title, post content, now sidebar. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to go into the section settings and where it has the background I can add in a video if I want to or a gradient or just a flat color like uh, black. What I want to do though is add an image. And if I hover over this top corner here we get this little emblem here where we can add in dynamic content. So if I click on this here it'll actually use the featured image from my blog post. So I'm going to add that on Click OK. I'm actually going to go to the post title here. I'm going to make the title text uh, white with a drop shadow, very strong drop shadow, and leave it at that. So whatever it's on, it might read a bit better. Now to show you how this, how easily this works, I am going to save this. I'm just going to go tab over to have a look at our post to see how it's displaying. So once that saves. We'll exit, save changes, and we're going to tab across. Now, if I hit refresh, you can see now our blog post has this cool uh, background here, the featured image background that we chose. So we can actually, from post blog post to blog post, have a different image in the background here just by simply using the standard WordPress editor, adding a featured image and having our content underneath. But I'm not going to stop there. I do want to go through and show you a little bit more. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to tab over. I'm going to edit the global body. And we're going to keep going from there. So what I want to do is add this cool little effect. I'm going to actually increase the spacing here to yeah, about 145. And what I'm going to do is in this top cog here, I'm going to go over to design for this for this full row. There's a section here called dividers. I can change the, the bottom here by clicking on bottom. I can change the divider. So I can pick a cool divider. So if I pick one that, say, matches the uh, front screen a bit, so maybe something like this one I saw earlier, something like maybe not a curve, more like this, I can make that divider height quite tall. I have this cool divider now. And if I go down to the next row, and make the background color something like a dark gray. You see now things are starting to shape up a little bit differently. I'm going to actually click on this, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm going to click on this module here for the post. I'm going to change the background to white. Now one thing I have noticed is that everything is very nicely spaced here, but you do have to set your spacing in here, otherwise it goes to the edge of the box. So I've set that to white, so I'm just going to go under to design and then down to spacing, under padding, I'm just going to add, say, 45, 45, 45, 45, which is a, it's pretty full on, but it's good enough. Although maybe we can make it something like 30, 30, 30, 30. Once again, if we hover, we can change that for the tablet, make it more, say, 15, 15, 15, 15. And for phone, we can make it even 10 if we want to. So we can make it a different width depending on what device or screen size people are using. 
Now this is where I want to have a bit of fun with it. I'm actually going to move this up so it overlaps this image a little bit. So at the top here where there's margin, I'm going to go negative 200 and see how it shifts up there. And if I scroll down to the box shadow, I can add a nice shadow. I can even give it a little bit more strength by increasing the opacity. And then we've got this nice look here. And what I can do after that is I can click on this uh, column section, choose the background, maybe I'll make the background black. And you see here, now things are looking just a little bit different. We've got our dynamic um, tile at the top here, our post has moved up, and we've got our sidebar there in a black area. So it's looking a little bit different than before. So I can actually go through again, save this. It's always worth checking your work too because it might not necessarily show up here the way you want it to on the screen. So always make sure you um, so close this one down, save changes, tab across and refresh. And you can see we've got this completely different look for our blog post. So as you can see there, now we've got this here, we've got our little divider coming through behind the, the text and everything showing up there. So as you can see, we've already got a pretty unique looking website. It's not the best looking website in the world, but it's pretty unique. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to fix up a few more things on here just uh, for the sake of the video and to show you a little bit more. So we're going to tab on back and go back in there, but you can already see how powerful it is. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and much like we did with the header, I'm going to add a gradient gradient, click to add gradient, and I'm going to change the direction to something more like, uh, yeah, 180, about 180, doesn't have to be perfect, wait, 90. I want it to go from black to transparent, so I'm going to choose black here, click on this green color, choose black again, but get this transparency and drag it right down. And if I scroll down, I can click Place Gradient above Background Image, and now this fades in. And maybe this background's a little dark, so I'm going to go in, lighten it right up so we've got like a nice, sort of like a light grey. Now if I want to just do something a little bit different, maybe I'll even add, just for the hell of it, above the sidebar I might even add something else. Maybe add the featured image, so I can actually get the post title. Here somewhere, <laughs> we've gone straight past it. Post title, elements, and I can turn off everything except for the featured image. And I might even just drag that up to the top. I don't like the way it's sitting to the side like that, so I'll go into my column options. Under column two, I'm going to get spacing, add some right padding, so 30 pixels. Tick on out. You see, we now we've got some space there. Now, something else that we can think about doing is even adding something else down the bottom here, like a call to action. So I'll click on there and click call to action. Get our free guide of some sort. Have our text here. We can add like sign up to download. And of course, we add a little button here, a little hash. Now button we can say sign up here. So we can add a nice little um, call to action at the bottom of that, that page. And it just, it's just really, really handy what you can do. One thing I'm going to do here as well, I'm going to go back in to design under spacing. And I'm going to get our gutter width so it's under sizing. Custom gutter width, I'm just going to narrow that a bit down to two. So we've got a nice little call to action down the bottom here. Now we can also add a background to that. So I'm going to choose a red color and I might even choose that same texture. And what I might even do as well, just to be a little bit different, open that up again, go design, spacing. And I'm going to actually add a negative bottom 
So I'm going to say negative 150 pixels at the bottom. It'll sit below that section as well and above the next section. If you do that, it's, it is important to create some space here. Otherwise, it will end up going over the top of something else. So, like I said, not the most attractive website so far, but you do get the idea. So now if I save that again, I'm going to exit. All changes saved. And refresh. You see we've got our website here looking a bit bit different. We've got our featured image on the right, we've got our title at the top, our blog content. And what's really cool about all of this, we can build as much as we want we can add in. So if we go, sorry, we cycle back a little bit, there's all, all of the modules from the Divi Builder are there and it can be made simply programmed into your pages. So I can add in all of these modules here, accordions, bar counters, blogs, buttons, blurbs, you can simply add in and create a completely customized blog layout. So it's pretty powerful. You can do pretty much anything with it and uh, it's very good, it's very powerful. So now this of course, if I go over to about, also works. Now my about page doesn't have a featured image, so it's just black, but you get the idea. It now works across the website because I've chosen for it to show on all pages. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty awesome uh, tool. And if you spend some time actually trying to get a good design together uh, this one's a bit you know, it's a bit yeah a bit rough but it shows you exactly what's possible if you have a bit of a play with it so if you want to have a play and really customize your websites as much as possible then this theme is definitely the way to go and um, highly recommend it so but in the next video I'm actually going to go through and show you down the bottom here I'm going to show you how to create a customized footer for your site so uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. You can add in your widget areas or you can add some custom content if you want to, whatever's easiest. And um, as I said before, everything is just, if I hit edit on this page, it's just our standard WordPress editor. And that's all we need. Everything is basically handled so we can just go in, use our WordPress editor to type up post publish and we get this layout. And it's the same for everything else on the website it, the idea is to build it so you don't have to keep on using the page builder to get the results you want on each page so i hope you like that video if uh, you are interested in checking out the divi theme it's uh it's available uh, i'll just put the link up on the screen uh it is an affiliate link so if you do buy i do earn a commission but i've used this as a professional web designer i've built close to 100 websites using the divi theme uh before this update and it's been quite powerful then, but now it's just sort of off the charts with what you can do with it. It's just amazing. And um, what I've been using here so far is just, I feel like it's just the tip of the iceberg as to what you can do. You really just got to have some fun and play with it. It's just really cool what you can do. So I, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously, if you do, uh, please like the video. If you want more like this, please subscribe. Also, leave a comment. If there's any guides you'd like to see, especially when it comes to Divi, um, I don't know absolutely everything, but if there's anything you'd like to see, please leave a comment. I'd like to hear about it and uh, maybe get a video together for you. So uh, other than that, I uh, hope you have a good day and uh, hang around for the next video or check the link in the description below to either download the Divi theme or access the playlist with all of these videos. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.